coming to you live from downtown Detroit. This is Benzinga's Pre-Market Prep with your host, Joel Conan. This is a volatile puppy here, isn't it? And Dennis Dick. I've been a penny. I will buy the stock for a penny. With everything you need to start your trading day. Good morning, everybody. Welcome to this Wednesday edition of Benzinga's Pre-Market Prep. Spencer Israel, Joel Elkanen, Dennis Dick, Mitch Hotch with you. This morning, going to talk about uh, movers from yesterday, movers from this morning. KB Holmes had earnings. Uh, we're going to talk about the rotation within tech, which sectors or which areas were hot, which areas were not. Uh, we're also going to ask the question with, of our guest, how can uh, CEOs actually impact a stock's performance. That's the question uh, our guest will help us answer today. New guest on the show. His name is Colby Howard. He is the president of Paragon Intel. Uh, today's show is also sponsored by them, Paragon Intel. Um, the idea here is that investors miss opportunities and risks because of incomplete, inaccurate, or inaccessible data on corporate executives. Paragon Intel provides the research and the data tools to give investors analysis around corporate management. To learn more, go to paragonintel.com. I'll put the graphic up on the screen there so you all can see what I'm how it's spelled, paragonintel.com. There we go. Uh, all right, let's throw it to Joel here. Joel, what's the word in the overnight or in the pre-market session? The puzzler market. That's what it that's, is. That's the word. Okay, that's a word. Puzzler. It is a word, correct? That's a word, yeah. Looked Why? pretty bad yesterday when we went down to 37.68. We always look great at 3,800, and we are. it's just a chop fest here. Uh, really, just really carving out a lot of trading in the 37.90 handle, a couple closes in that area. Pre-market high, 805, but we uh, faded hard off that. Pre-market low, 76.50. We're trying to get off that level right now as we speak at 80.75. That's down 13.75 handles. Crude is in the green by 18 cents at 53.39, lifting all the oil stocks in the last couple of sessions. Gold and silver going opposite ways. Silver's up nine, or gold's up nine bucks at 18.53.20. Silver going the opposite way. That's down 14 cents at uh, 25.30. And Bitcoin, I call the Bitcoin a little bit of a puzzler too here. Uh, trading a lot in the 30 handle, $30,000 handle. Really can't get back into 40 again, nor does it refuse to break down under 30. Uh, but a lot of choppy action going on here this morning. Dennis, could you update what you're seeing in the after hours and pre-market session? Yeah, chops. So I woke up at 4 a.m. and the market was trading higher. Decided to go back to bed. We weren't up that much. And I wake back up at 6 o'clock. And I don't know what you did, Joel, in those two hours. But the S&P's turned red. Do you do that on purpose? Do you wake, do you like, do you set your alarm? Or are you just like, are you just your uh, internal market clock? No, that's, that's old man syndrome. I got to get up to take a leak. <laughs> <laughs> The old, the old uh, I better not wet the bed trick, so let's get up and I'm trying so to So you time it. You time it. You time it. Okay. I don't right. time it. <laughs> yeah, it's that alarm. <laughs> you don't wake up by this time. No. My all right. All right. Block, that's... My internal bladder will tell me that I need to wake up. But when I wake up, I check my phone always because if the S&Ps are going nuts, I'll, I would actually go up to the trade, trade cave. And yes, I said go up because my trade cave is up in this house. It was down in my last house. And um, and then I would trade, but when the S and P futures are up seven or eight, I'm not waking up at four in the morning for that. So too old. Back when I was 30 years old, a young whippersnapper, then I would be able to trade those 4 a.m. shifts. I'm not as good at it anymore. All right, folks, we're working low again. They say I know we've been trying to figure this out since we've switched over. I have my volume cranked. Although some people so, are saying they I'm like trying you. to talk loudly for you. Some guys. some people are saying they like your volume lower. <laughs> A lot of people saying volume too low. I we have tried. We we were fiddling with this for 15 minutes before we started the show today. We cannot figure out why this uh, you know the system doesn't like my voice. We're gonna get Dennis a new headset anyway. So. All right, and mine right, and mine is too high. I'm in a lockdown here in Ontario. I can't even go to stores, so nothing's open. So you got to send it to me. 
we'll send you a new you gotta headset. show up at the doorstep with the other 100 amazon packages i get every day me and joel all right, so, Bosch Trading. Volume is great over here. Sh- so. Should we talk? We talked a lot about Kathy yesterday. We can talk about her again. <laughs> sure. A new purchase. New purchase is Zoom. But the lemmings, the blind squirrels just following, are not making money on this one this morning. And that is because there was an offering price looming. I actually caught myself last night because I, I, I saw that she had bought Zoom. And I bought a little bit of Zoom. And I'm like, oh, wait a minute. They haven't priced the offering yet, so then I just turned around and sold it. Um, I actually did make a little bit of money. Um, I made about a buck, so I was able to buy in the 356 handle and sold quickly in the 357 cool. handle, a little bit in the 358 handle. Um, and then I was like, I'm not holding this overnight because what if the offering price is much lower? Lo and behold, it is, and the offering price is way down at $340. So... One thing to know is what I've said a couple days ago is I do not like buying stocks before I know what that price is because if they price them way in the hole, in this case it's almost $17 in the hole, the stock was probably going to go down. So if you're wondering why Zoom is trading down here this morning when Kathy Wood took a stake, it is because the offering price is priced at 340 What a weird day in that thing yesterday, right? They, they bought it. I mean, Kathy Wood took a big position too. So but you know, didn't know that during the day, though. No, but her ups, her buys may have pushed the price. What was the volume yesterday? Let's check. Yeah, let me go I'm to... sure it's huge, so maybe it doesn't influence it at all. Uh, just, eight, yeah, almost bought. nine million. Oh it traded, yeah, no. well, yeah, it traded three point three point four uh, on Monday. How, so how yeah, much? nine nine million it traded yesterday. Yes, yeah, th- three times so she, as much. So she bought. Uh, eighty-eight thousand, another three hundred. She bought about three hundred forty thousand. So she bought about four percent of the volume. So she bought a little bit. But I mean, is this just a buy the dip now that Kathy and she starts accumulating stock? I mean, I could argue you got a pr- line in the sand. I don't think it's going to trade down to the three forty price. No, it sure doesn't look like that. Well, the, yeah, but it was way up, Joel. Like, look at what it was doing before they uh, not. So go and look at the uh, yep. after hours and pre market chart. This thing was over 360 even in the in the AM because people are like, oh, Kathy bought it. It's got to go higher. So you look at it, and, you know, obviously they just got the pricing. It came out. The press release was at three 543. Oh, no, last night they priced it. They priced it 1217. 1217 last night. So now, you know, you get the herbs coming in, and they're like, okay, they're trying to participate in it, so they're going to flip it short and try to get, you know, participating in the offering. So that's why the price naturally comes down. A lot of times when they're doing it, what we said, you know, to survive, those offering prices, sometimes, you know, they go straight down to them. When they're doing them to grow, and in this case, Zoom is still growing, they often don't trade down to those prices. So I don't expect this to trade down to 340. I'm kind of interested, not as an investment, not as an investment, but as a trader to buy the dip. I'm kind of interested just because Kathy's in there and seems to be working. I, I don't know if I'd want to take it all the way down to 340. I don't like losing 10 bucks if you're buying a 350. But if you could get this 346, 347, risk hmm. yourself down to that offering price, might not be a bad play. What are your thoughts? Zoom just as a trade. I think people that are caught, and uh, maybe on the short, I mean, or at least maybe they covered a little bit yesterday. But you had a weak stock. You had it going through a cons- you know major lows in the same area. Just like it was on the death march yesterday, like they're going to have to print this thing, you know, at like three and a quarter. And then it turned around and people that were banking on that lower, you know, new shorts, current shorts, they were, you know, hey, I'm going to bring this in at 315, 320. They got turned around. And then you have someone like a big buyer like Kathy Wood. I'm sure the uh, the algos can sniff that out. So I agree with you. I don't know about it going back down, down to that 340 price. If you want to risk 11 bucks here, and you know you'd have to obviously give it under 340. You also wait a day. I mean, you don't have to. You know, yeah. you, you don't have yeah. to hop on it today. Uh, all all things considered, I would use that whatever you're doing. Right now, you're going to have to lean on that 331.10. So it's, you can lean on the 340, but that 331.10 was the yeah. low. 37.71, the low of the move. So dude, tough one. Puzzler. Zoom is uh, the puzzler stock in that, the puzzler that market. That wasn't a puzzler, though, if you look at what they were buying yesterday. They were buying everything that had the 2020 story attached to it. 
So they were coming in and they bought the Momo stocks hard. I mean, Etsy. Look at the move Etsy had yesterday. That was an incredible move. You know, Roku continues to run. I mean, it's just, you know, running, 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 running. So anything that's got like this whole it's a little stay at home, but a little 2020 story. What worked in 2020 was working yesterday very, very well. Those were the stocks that they were buying. I'm still kind of seeing that even a little bit this morning. But, I mean, it is, you know, uh, a market that changes its mind very quickly, too, at least right now. But for the most part, buy the dip continues to work. And if you're buying the dip in Zoom yesterday, you know, I guess you're you're, you're being rewarded still this morning here. So I'm, I'm inclined as a trade, not as an investment. Okay, Etsy just looks like it's just hanging. I mean, that's really all. I mean, there's someone there at 204, and they're not moving. So we'll see. We'll see what happens These in the two, regulars. Three day moves, and when they start getting the momentum going on their side, they're hard to break. So yeah. I mean, this is the same thing. S and P's roll over. They're like, Nah, we're not selling the stock. This is the kind of stock we like. So I mean, you can't argue with these charts. You can't argue with what's making new all-time highs. Shorting stocks making new all-time highs is a recipe to usually lose money, as I proved last week with my Tesla trade. Um, it's tough. It's tough to short stocks making new all-time highs. You look at relative strength, and that's what seems to continue to go. But you know, we do have other headlines here. Let's go. Uh, but what, right before we go, that one other one which we got right was XPEV. We were talking about this 38, and we are liking it, liking it. I never took a position on it. It blasts off yesterday as the EV story starts to get hot again. Um, NEO didn't really do much, but NEO had the convertible offering weighing on it a little bit there and the downgrade, but holy mackerel. That was a move in XPEV yesterday. Rally 10 bucks. Yeah, getting back. Uh, broke, had a couple highs, just like at 46, and... Open right at the high of the previous session and and took off. You're right. That just fits the uh, the Momo theme. Uh, let's see. You had it move here. So if you want to look, when it got a little bit overdone, 75 whew, went down to 38. What's that? Like a 40 point move. So I mean, you're looking in a 57, 58 handle to get back half of those losses. So. So almost there, almost there. As well, it's down a buck eighty-two right now. So you will want to keep an eye on the close and the high from yesterday. Big levels. Uh, the close is fifty-four thirty, and yes, right there, the high too. That high was right there too at fifty-four seventy-five. I'm playing around with my mic settings again. Let me know if anything changes here. Here, also, what I did is I, I turned Joel a little lower. I'm gonna turn myself a little lower. So we're going to come down to Dennis's level. It, just I, like I, it, it won't like this. It, it's It's been since we switched to StreamYard. It just won't allow me to like get over a one on this mic volume. I have my mic volume. There's even a, a button for it. I have it cranked to 200 as much as I possibly can put it up. So, so I, don't know. I can try a different headset. Just like the rest of us, just like the rest of life, uh, Joel and I are coming down to Dennis's level on ah. this. I, I'm going to bring us Hopefully down. Hopefully you can hear me. We'll try to get try, I'll try a new headset tomorrow, but... It's you know coincidentally I think it's with the stream here. It's, uh... I keep I'm, I keep bumping me down. So let me know when uh. Yeah, work in progress. All right, let's go to uh, KB Homes. I imagine that's where you were gonna go, Dennis, or was it not? Yeah, you can. Well, where what were you thinking? Yeah, no, that's fine. The oh. home builders. We've been talking about this. Is the last quarter when they were reporting? They actually they used to be the they pop them and drop them. Last quarter they weren't doing. They popped them and then they eventually dropped them. So in this case, it's just the pure pop. I mean, the home builders are firing on all cylinders. I mean, like I said, I got people knocking on my door asking for a home. So I don't know if it's a way in the, in the U.S., but it is that way in a lot of places here right now. So home builders firing on all cylinders. Great quarter for them. Give us the numbers. Yeah, Q4 EPS, $1.12 for us, a $0.93 cent estimate. Earnings on fire. Sales also beat 1.19 versus $1.14 billion. They said they delivered uh, about 2,800 homes last quarter, which is down year over year. But the average selling price is up 5%. Stock rallying 6% here this morning. 38 is a huge number for this. But even before you get to that, Joel, probably going to point out this 36 because you get a, do got a few tops in there too. So let's see if it can hold the gains. It's setting the tone here a little bit early um, because we're just getting into earnings season here right now. We're going to get J.P. Morgan, Wells Fargo, Citigroup on Friday. Those are your big guns. I think we get Delta tomorrow. That should be always interesting. Delta's but, ahead of them? I think so. Delta's Thursday. I've got on my calendar. What about and Taiwan Semiconductor's coming up too? 
I'll let so, you guys make your own decision on this one. Uh, we just popped just one. under 3650. Got a bunch of highs in this area, right? It stopped us on four different occasions, and now you're just getting one leap of faith out there. So better hold in here. Uh, a ways to go to back and fill. Dennis mentioned at 38. But uh, when you see uh, so many highs in the same area, not these necessarily, tells me, you know, you hold here, sure, we'll make a run at 38. Just the historical pattern on these things, their earnings, you know, they have until the last couple quarters had uh, sold off. But important to hold in here, and it is, and it's holding in the 36 handle as we speak. But a lot of highs in the same area to me. Can we talk Taiwan Semiconductor? Because this thing's been on an incredible run here. Um, I had it overnight. I flipped it out already before the show started. I've been buying it overnight every night. For like the last five days because we know these things tend to lift. Which one's that, Dennis? Report, TSM, Taiwan Semiconductor, and it's been running ahead of the report. I believe it reports Thursday night, Spencer. I have let on me, my calendar. Let me pull correct? my calendar here. That's In what I have. handy dandy Benzinga Pro. Yeah, we're coming into earnings season. I was telling Joel yesterday. Banks are on Friday. Hard to believe. You're cracking too. I don't know. If I'm cracking. I, I think. Yeah, I think that's the, that's my connection. Uh, yeah. So TSM is. I, don't know, I lose track of dates. What's today's date? The 13th? Okay. Taiwan Semi is before the bell uh, tomorrow morning. JP Morgan, Wells Fargo, City are all Friday morning. Delta is tomorrow morning as well. So, got some you earnings look here. At, you look at this stock, and it has been basically straight up the entire year of 2020. It started the year down, way down, like $50, up to $124 here now. A lot of high expectations in this because it has run into the report. I think they're gonna. I think they're gonna beat it. I just don't know how the reaction's gonna be to it. But man, this has just been a stock that just quietly keeps performing. So hard to argue with that shirt. Uh yeah. The the pre market trading really doesn't give you anything. Just of course it's traded overseas. I will just give you uh one twenty six twenty nine. Uh, that was your high. That's that's your all time high. One twenty five twenty yesterday. People stepped ahead of it a little bit, but uh, did post that all time closing high yesterday. One twenty three. So I'd use that if you're if you're buying this thing or you're shorting it. See what happens when it comes into unchanged. Tuesday's closed right there as well at twenty two sixty. Then let's move on. Other stocks that are trading here, and we've got a lot of action just all over the place here. SPAC started to move yesterday. We got one that's getting a rating here, a boost, and it's Skills, SKL Zebra, Wedbush, mm -hmm. going to buy. Mm -hmm. um, this stock, I, I believe uh, this was Kathy Wood buy a, few, a week ago or so, was it not? Mm -hmm. That's correct. Yeah, so she started buying. She bought for a couple of days. Stock lifted for a couple of days. She actually bought right near the bottom there. When you see that 1806, we know she likes to buy the dip. Good buy. Next two days, it runs on the Kathy Wood pop. It ran about 25% on the Kathy Wood uh, buys, and it has continued. Now Wedbush gets on board do you, here. Do you want me to read you? Do you want me to read you what Michael Pactor is saying about what about um, skills? Yeah, yeah. What's he saying? Uh, summary. He say? uh, Kathy Wood bought some upgrade. Summary, not not quite. <laughs> summary, <laughs> summary of the note is that their business model is unique, uh, and let me let me try to because they, these notes have a lot of jargon. Let me try to get through the jargon. I, what's can. what's the issue here? Uh, I, didn't, SK, I didn't hear SK, the symbol. S K L Z. S K L Z. I'm I'm gonna be like chat. I'm just gonna complain for the rest of the show. Uh, uh, chat. There was only one complaint. Well, let's in see. There. Titles developed what, is for SKLV or SLKV? Z zebra. SKL Zebra. Come on. Get the get it with the I SPACs, know this one. Joel. Joel doesn't like SPACs. I love SPACs. Wait. Or old SPAC skills. I, uh, anyway. What is this coming? I don't even know what they do. I'm, I'm they make Skittles. To, I'm trying to explain. They no, got no, the no. skills to pay the bills. No, it, it's, it's, it's video gaming. So uh, oh, pa Pactor said Pactor he expects it. skills' growth rate to vastly exceed that of the mobile game industry. That's what Michael Pactor is saying, um, and they're 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 basically like a a a, a platform for. I don't know, it's hard to explain. I'm not. I I don't want to explain it wrong. So rather than me butcher my way through it, let me actually pull up a description on Benzinga Pro. Anyways, and, and read that. It, it it's making new highs. Um, what are you gonna do? I don't know what else I to mean, say. Kathy Wood is buying. It's making new highs. It's breaking out. 
I'd be a buyer of pullbacks here. Now Michael Pactor gets on board. So we know I like my I buy stocks simply because Michael Pactor goes buy on them. He's okay. V- very simple. Mobile game developer. That's what all you need to know. Mobile okay. game developer. I tried to move my mic here again. My buddy there on Twitter, Kiss the Fireman, he just said, move your mic closer. So I tried that too. So we're trying everything here with this mic. You're telling me again. to move my mic farther. I Because I, uh, you're I, too I loud. A little bit. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, it's making new highs. I mean, it's yeah. breaking out. I'd be a buyer of pullbacks on skills. Uh, so. You got it. The four o'clock bump, that's the only thing I can give you. Uh, and that's uh, 26.15. That's above yesterday's high. Yesterday's high was only uh, 2561. So if you need one target, one number to keep an eye on, to keep an eye on that right at that 4 a.m. print. That's when it printed uh, over $26, but hard to call top on this one. We had Though the news might, breaking. It's hard to yep. call it. We had the news breaking at 9 a.m. when we were stopping the show yesterday. That was for Fubo. We talked about if this gets over 30, it Ooh. looks like it's going to break out. It not only got over 30, it ripped on the breakout. No, I did not rebuy it. I thought about it, but um, I got sidetracked, and then it was at 32, and I was like, ah, and I actually could have got it because it came back and even retested the 30 a couple of times in the morning. So oh. if you're so inclined to just buy the 30 breakout, you're up a cool eight points already. So wow. So, Big Pop, Fubo, they're getting into sports betting, which we thought that they were eventually going to do. They bought some company that's obviously participating in that. So, Big Pop, story's getting hot again. I still like the story. I'd be a buyer of pullbacks. I'm not in it. Wish I was. Yes, uh, I did the article on this one later in the day, and I said, well, I don't know really where there's resistance in this one because after uh, 3077, there was not a daily high till 3899. And where you at right right now? Two days. Yeah. Probably been there. What's the pre market high? Uh, Right here, 3850. There. So 40 bucks. No, 39. It got to 39. You're right, Dennis. Oh, there you boy, go. that's Your a good number for today. Again, Joel. I don't know, 40, oh, you get Lord. this close. I didn't think 37 and a half. The, the Kenny Gleck, 35 gets you 37 and a half, 37 and a half <laughs> gets you 40. I kind of like that theory, and I, it looks like it wants to go to 40 to me as well. It's a big pop in one day, but story got hot all of a sudden. And even, you know, we had some negativity from our, uh, from the, our friend on Twitter there who's been talking the stock down. They're kind of ignoring him now. So, obviously, every time he was talking bearish or getting on CNBC, the stock would get hit. But there is not the story anymore. So, you know, now that maybe light, the light shed analyst isn't having as much influence as he did, the story could get hot again. So, I think you do buy pullbacks here. It's a big pop yesterday, though, so I'm not chasing. You know, I used him in my article because it was really like the perfect storm for this stock because you hit the perfect that timing six- on the downgrade. Yeah. Yeah, and then yeah, it had uh, the downgrade, and then you had the double bottom, right, at that 52.50, and it was just teetering, and then he came in, and then um, Carousel hopped in late at, like, 33. It was, it was a double whammy. Trip, yeah, with the analyst. I, I was hoping Laura Martin was going to come out, like, around, you know, 25, 26 and defend the stock. Uh, she didn't. You got room all the way. 50% takes you back to 43, but... 39 is a big level of the day so far. We'll see what Fubo could do, all the people that took it home overnight. It could see the 50% too. I mean, we saw it yeah. you know, attack on nine points here in a few days. Could attack on another five this morning? It could. Again, chasing these things. I'm not sure I'm doing that. But, I mean, in some in this market, sometimes you're getting paid to chase too. It's been a, a market where the momentum starts going in one direction, and it can continue. I mean, that Fubo breakout there from 30 the first time around was incredible. And we came down very quickly. Like We didn't do a lot of work in there. So when you come down through the areas quickly, then go back up through the areas quickly, and that's what we saw yesterday as Fubo ripped through all, all of the 30s pretty much. Yeah, I mean, the the the, uh, the all goes there. I mean, we used to talk about, you know, market goes down so much faster than it, than it goes up. But I, I yeah. think the speed of algorithm trading is is just as equal, man. It's uh, it's no longer that. It's a, it's a different it's a different market. Everything moves fast. All right. Eight, eight twenty six here. Another stock. If we want to go back to SPACs is canoe. And this got a 
big pop last night because there was an article this is from. Interesting. Yeah, give us the details here, Spencer. So Canoe, of course, has gone this back route, right? They're going public via a SPAC. But before that, there was a report that Apple had held talks with the company over either a partnership, I guess, or maybe even an acquisition. So GOEV, which is the Canoe ticker, spiked on that, and it was very short-lived. At least last I checked. I tried to unplug my mic again. I don't know if that makes any difference, but no. Okay. Everybody continues to complain about it. We know my mic volume is low. We know, we know, we know. We're trying to fix it. So this thing went nuts yesterday, Joel, on the Apple news here or on the Apple you know, the rumor or whatever it was. Oh. It went all the way to $22. It's come off that level significantly here. Um, so chasing last night, you're not rewarded because they're already down 3 bucks, but... I don't know. These things get, you know, one story behind them and they can run and run and run. So, but now you're in the middle of nowhere here and you're up from $12 just seven days ago. So I think I'm just, this is just a curveball. Hard, hard. Pitch this is yeah, really. Uh, and, and who was the source on that? Uh, the Verge, which the is a, Verge. a tech, tech news, tech news company. Hmm. Let's see. 1923. Two closes in that area, or actually three closes in that area. The highest of those closes was 1992. So I keep an eye on that. See if we can post a new all-time closing. Had a couple other closes right in the 19 handle too, 1929, 1945, 49. So 1967.58623 is my number for that. If it holds that, maybe get back up into that 22 area. If not, a little back and fill. Continuing on the Momo party, it was just a ton of stocks making new highs. One I don't talk about that much, but one that just continues to go. And I day trade this thing as SE. And I don't have a position on it right now, but man, every time I come in, this thing is going up again. It's making new all-time highs. It just ne doesn't get a lot of media coverage. People don't talk about this much. Uh, but I tell you, this stock, it's one of those 2020 performers too, because this stock started the year way down. At thirty-eight dollars, it's now two hundred and twenty bucks. So this has been an incredible performer too. I, like I said yesterday, they were buying all the twenty twenty performers yesterday, and they were buying this one too. So SE trading up here again, stocks making new highs. I think I'm a buyer of pullback on pullbacks on this one too. Like I, I keep buying pullbacks on this and just flipping it out and trading it um, during during the day and even overnight. But wow, it's been an unbelievable performer. Yeah. People ask uh, me, what does it do? I don't even totally know. <laughs> it's something with street. Isn't it something with uh, um, they sell stuff. It, it's online, isn't it, it? it? Isn't isn't SC a Chinese company? No, I don't think it's Chinese. Hang on. We're going to get where they are. They are out of Singapore. And I believe right. that okay. they are. There's something uh, with streaming, I believe. Internet they operate platform. three segments. Operate three segments: digital entertainment, e-commerce, and digital financial services. They offer. That's everything that the market likes right now. <laughs> it really is. Those three segments. They are in the wheelhouse of what this market likes right now. Selling stuff online, digital. They like all that stuff. So I'm I'm on their website here right now, and. Um, just trying to, because I've traded the stock so much. Like I said, I, I when I Google, this was actually my best traded stock of 2020, and I don't totally even know what they do, <laughs> which is unbelievable. So okay, yeah, Singapore, and they're in the everything market for this market. Uh, you could draw the world's steepest trend line here, just going. I know. Up it's there. smooth too. And wait, or actually, like, even like a little channel. I mean, you get afraid of heights on that one, but and I'm not even going to attempt to try and draw that in there. But I mean, as long this is a, a market stock, and as long as the market is holding up, this kind of stock is going to continue to probably catch a bit. If everything rolls over and dies, this is one's going to get hit three times harder. The beta's higher; it's going to get three times higher. But I mean, these are the stocks that have been working. These are the stocks that you know have a story behind them. Anything to do with e-commerce has killed it in 2020. So, and this is a pl way to play it on Singapore, and people are, are, are on that as well. So, I, I like the stock still. Again, these are trades, though, and I would say Joel's right. I would draw that trend line, 
And when that trend line breaks, get the hell out. <laughs> but as long Haven't as that trend line is intact. That there's, that now I know why it's uh, your best traded stock. Uh, Evan just said that it has really wide spreads. So you're in there probably making a spread that you could drive a truck through. Not bad. And... It's it doesn't really it's cuz it's a $220 stock, but the spreads aren't that bad. So it's a wild stock though. It's a wild stock and there's just been buyers in this thing nonstop. You can see them after hours, you can see them during the day. It's like every time it pulls back a little bit there's just more people scooping it up nonstop relentless. Oh, I almost had it. I almost had it. That's not too bad. I, I like that. I like that line. So there you go. What in the bottom? That line's around 200 right now. So yep. trend is still in your in, in in obviously in a nice uptrend as long as you're above 200. Should so I go for buying broke a here? Again, sure. you get pullbacks though. So buy pullbacks. We don't buy rips. We buy dips. So you get a pullback. This is a stock that continues to perform. Again, not putting my long-term investment account, but as trades, I'd hold until that trend line breaks. This is this is. Oh, We're oh. rallying all the way back. It's by the dippers. You can't shake them, Joel. Like I told you, this is the puzzler market. It just, you know. It's not puzzling. It's by the dip. Bank coin. Uh, that's, <laughs> that's pretty horrible. much the way it's been working. <laughs> that, it's ridiculous. That, that, but... that, that, that second line is horrible. Now, no, that's not too bad. I'll work on that during my spare time. <laughs> the channel. other one, yeah, is weird. It's almost. <laughs> it's like a little, yeah. It's hard, man. I just got It's these... a weird channel. Well, I like your trend line. I like your bottom trend line. I don't like that other line. So okay, I'll keep this one then. All right, All right. Hey, Urban Outfitters. I, I I keep waiting for Spencer to lead it, and then I interrupt. So, oh, I'm so sorry. Take over. I'm sorry. Is Spencer okay. working today? Is I'm here. There? I'm he here. He leads I, the way. I'm, I'm yeah. working on I'm working on our various uh, audio complaints. Um, in I know. The <laughs> I am too. Now we're both working. You can tell we're off because we're I'm adjusting my mic every five minutes. Uh, Okay, Five Urban seconds. Outfitters actually was one of two that caught my eye. Two retailers, Urban Outfitters and and Party City, both caught my eye this morning. They're both down big, uh, Ur- and they they both basically said the same thing. They both said that holiday sales were down year over year. I thought all these retailers were killing it online. Anyways, you got all kinds of support down there. I don't know who's selling this down twenty five or twenty six bucks last night, but you have all kinds of support down there at twenty six. So until it can really even the low of the move, which is twenty four forty, but I see so many lows at the twenty six area. Whoever is selling at twenty six last night is definitely not looking at a chart. Because there was a lot of support there at twenty six. It has bounced out of there. This is the buy the dip market. That was a, like a fifteen percent dip last night. So I don't like the company at all. But I'll say that 26 level, I like that level, and you can put anything on for a trade. So I wish I would have yeah. been looking at that last night and nibbling on those 26 and changes because you're already at 27 and a half. Did they give any updates on their pizzeria project in Philadelphia? <laughs> you say this every time. <laughs> you got to sell something. Pizza works online. Look at Domino's. So don't give them heat for that. Give them props for that. <sighs> Uh, I like the your 26 area. Uh, that was a big fall. And, you know, anybody that uh, had been trading this or had some puts looked at those four lows in the same area. 26 to 28. You snuck over 28 uh, early this morning, traded 27.50. So above 28, maybe work a little bit more into yesterday's range. I think you, if you go back down, I think you find buyers ahead of 26. Does this spook any other retailers? What do you think, Spencer? Like, you look and you think, naturally, the Gap. You can think of Abercrombie and Fetch, A&F. Um, you can even go as far to say, does this hit Kohl's and Nordstrom's? They're all trading down a little bit. They were trading down a little bit last night. I mean, Macy's is just in this relentless uptrend for the last month here. So it seems to be, you know, it's not even down at all here this morning. Does this spook a few people who are hiding in retail? Other stocks? I, I mean, is, is Urban Outfitters and Party City going to be the driver of retail? It, it does drive, it, but I have seen pure moves with Gap, and I have seen it with Abercrombie and Fitch because they're very close to similar stores. So I, I don't so, know. I can't so even here, tell the so difference so between since Urban, we're on the Urban topic, Outfitters and the Gap. Since we're on the topic, Target reported December comps were up 17% year over year this morning. Holy, what happened to Target? That was 180 when I looked at it. It's at 200 bucks. What just happened the last five days? It just ran 20 bucks. Wow, 200 is on the radar here. Probably some size there, but probably going to get chewed out here imminently. I mean, wow. 
That's a quiet little move. And I, I ever screw this one up. I bought that at 101 on that disappointing day back in like April. And here it is. It's a double now. I took a quick 25 points out of it in literally like 25 days. And I was like, that's a good trade. Bad sale. You regret all sales in this market. That's the funny thing about a bull market. Every sale is a bad sale because the stocks are higher just a week later. $199. Holy macro people pay, pay money for stocks. All right. I'm, yeah. I'm bringing on our guest here unless Joel sure. gets some mad. Okay, here we go. Colby Howard is the president of Paragon Intel, joining us now on Pre-Market Prep. Colby, good morning. Good morning, and uh, welcome from our very empty office as a harbinger of Manhattan real estate. <laughs> I was going to say, you brought all your friends with you this morning. That's great. That's great. That's my um, joke. Yeah, I know. So I stole that joke from Joel. Uh, all right, Colby, <laughs> uh, but before we get into this, uh, tell us a little bit about uh, – Paragon and, and really like the the idea is or the idea behind it and what you're trying to provide investors. Yeah, so we actually started in 2017. A bunch of buy side guys basically saw that management, analyzing management was something more often than not, even institutional investors were deficient at. And if you can get a read on the CEO, on the person who makes the strategic decisions at a company you can get a great read on how that company is going to do over the next two or so, three or so years. And so we saw that the individual decision makers were underanalyzed, and that's where we fill the gap. All right, uh, let's, let's talk about some examples of this. Can you give us some examples maybe of, uh, of, of CEOs uh, or executive uh, C-suite turmoil that made for a tradable event? Yeah, I mean, you have, so I'll, uh, I'll share my screen real quick, um, kind of, we can go to Valiant after this, but I want to show you guys real quick um, what worked in this market, and that was coronavirus and airlines. This was super interesting. If you, kind of one of the things you can do, you can look at CEO changes, and that's like a point of turmoil where there's a tradable event, there's uncertainty in the market, but this was interesting because you had coronavirus hitting and everyone going into panic mode in the airline industry. And what do you look for in a crisis? You look for leadership. Leadership is earned through on-the-job experience. Only two airlines had executives, CEOs, that were there the last time a crisis of this magnitude hit the airlines, and that was 9-11. That wasn't even a financial crisis. That was 9-11. And if you look at the CEO of Southwest and the CEO of Alaska, were the two that were in the C-suite at those airlines during 9-11, CFOs and now their CEOs, and those have meaningfully outperformed the rest of the airlines. And so if you think about how to play a drop, okay, who are going to be the most resilient, who has a playbook, who has seen this all before, who has a steady hand, that's one thing that we've seen really play out over the past, call it, uh, 10 months or so. So, like, I guess, how much should investors weigh this this aspect, or this signal, I should say, when when putting on trades or, or investments? Like, how, how important are we talking? Like, how, how important is this? So, I would say, I think you guys were talking about algos in the market right now. Think about all the things that algorithmic traders, all the quants, can analyze. One of them is not humans. And so if you're looking at a CEO change, and actually I'll, uh, I'll share this right now again. Um, if you're looking at a CEO change, you are entering a moment where people do not know who this person is and what they've done before and how they're going to do at their new company. Now, if you can see here, Brian Krasanich was head of Intel. And you see Intel, you see a brand name. That's what CDK saw. And that's when he, the CDK board came out, and you're always going to hear from the board, this is the perfect fit pick for our company. And in this case, we actually look at, for our company, relative performance against comps, not absolute performance. Intel underperformed meaningfully while Krasanich was CEO at Intel. And so all of a sudden, you're like, wait a minute, he actually underperforms. That's a red flag. And the other things you start looking at are there's insider, sell, or insider trading accusations. He married one of his former employees. He has accusations 
of improper activity. All of a sudden, if you're doing a little bit more work, sometimes it's just a Google page two type search, you're starting to see that the narrative that the board wants you to believe doesn't hold up. And as people do more work over the next month or two, this is an opportunity to say, okay, over the next two years, this actually doesn't match. They don't have any experience that's helpful for this new company or vice versa. It's Chipotle. When um, I think Brian Nickel joining, um, joining from Taco Bell was amazing because you do research on Taco Bell and you see the initiatives this guy put into place over his two or three years there. And then you look at what Chipotle needs. He literally had to repeat just the same playbook for upgrading technology, customer satisfaction, all of that. And he did the same playbook. And all of a sudden, uh, you had Chipotle had an amazing rip. And so I think the CEO changes, especially, are a tradable event over the month to three that everyone's trying to do research on who this new CEO is and how they align with what the, their new company needs. What about like the immediate pop or drop? I'm curious what you've observed around that. Like when a CEO is announced, uh, CEO gets fired, CFO gets fired, or CFO leaves, uh, new CEO is announced, there's that immediate reaction. Is that, is that always a harbinger of what is to come, or is it uh, a, in, in an over-exaggeration, or, or what? I think same storyline, overreaction. Um, there can be no reaction, there can be an overreaction. I think we were talking about this uh, last week, and so Hunter Harrison uh, joined CSX, and the stock pops massively the minute that news hits. Why? Because it is a gut reaction. He's done, he's run the railroad playbook three or four times. And if that's the initial reaction, then now there's an opportunity to say, okay, what's different about this time? Unfortunately, what's different about this time is he was on oxygen and died a couple months later. Um, that's a that's a curveball in itself. That doesn't happen too often. But this is a this is a way to say what did the market do initially, and what what can you not know immediately? What work can you do on your own about what they did at their last company and what's different about this new company to make a much more educated guess? Especially if they're the main reason that the stock is moving then do research on the thing that's moving the stock and you can find some opportunities. I, I want to pull up this example of Valiant. We had yeah. talked about we talked about Valiant Pharmaceuticals on our show a while when this, well, back when it was called Valiant, it's not called that anymore. Um, and the CEO was, was a big part of, of that story. So, so talk, talk us through the, 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 the timeline here of events mm -hmm. and, and how it related to the, to the stock's performance. So this is an example, by the way, of uh, it's actually very similar to Enron in terms of when people say trust the smart money, the smart money in both Enron's case and Valiant's case were the um, Wall Street analysts who are coming out with buy ratings. Why were they coming out with buy ratings? Because investment banks made a quarter of a billion off Enron and M&A fees and same with Valiant. So they made money. They were the smart money from an investment standpoint following them on their investment recommendations and turned out to not be a good recommendation as you hit those highs. Um, one of the ways that you could see how the narrative wasn't lining up is first off, I mean, let's look at that DUI real quick. He got pulled over with a 0.13 BAC. He had to take his chewing tobacco out of his mouth to blow into the breathalyzer. He could not count from D to W in the alphabet. And he got his license suspended for three months. He started having a massive drinking problem. He would down three or four whiskeys before going to a meeting to talk about the next company to buy. So you start to see ex um, external indications that something's not stable here. You talk about Valiant having a cost-cutting culture, and yet he joins the company and over the next five years buys three different jets. That, if you look at H, that third Gulfstream jet had a waiting list for a year, he paid up to make sure he got that more expensive plane. You look at his ability to cope with leverage. He wanted to make a donation to Duke. And so he takes a hundred million dollar loan against his stock from Goldman, partly to fund this Duke contribution. You see he has a $4 million mortgage on a $6 million house. 
This is someone whose comp is entirely tied up in stock performance and what is he doing personally? How is he acting? Um, how much leverage does he have? And what happens when that goes wrong, as you saw with selling that Gulfstream jet for cash and kind of that $1.3 million share sale that uh, Goldman forced once, it, uh, once the stock started plummeting. And so this is just think about what the narrative is in the market and all the things that aren't adding up by the CEO, the person who's kind of the kingmaker at this company. So how do you find all that information? That's not all in filings, obviously. Not in filings, but it is all public. Um, okay. Public, I would say, easy to access? No. Um, the work that some, especially institutional investors do, going to courthouses, um, using kind of public databases and really making sure you know what you're looking for. Um, and really, I would also say, though, if you have, if your intention is to do constant diligence on a CEO, you'd be amazed what that focus allows you to uncover. Okay, someone made a, um, someone made a $53 million donation to Duke. You're going to start having kind of chatter about, okay, where did that money come from? All of his money is tied up in stock, and there hasn't been any insider selling. So you start to actually do this math, and you can actually back into a lot of this. And this is where what we're trying to do is automate a lot of this work. Um, a lot of people do this by hand right now on the institutional side. We're on the line with Colby Howard, president of Paragon Intel. It sounds like uh, we might even have some few private investigators working for you to get some of that information. <laughs> but uh, what I wanted to ask you is you, you focus on the CEO, right? Is there any, I mean, a lot of times like when the CFO all of a sudden resigns for whatever reasons, then, hey, people think accounting uh, do you extend your research into the, you know, the others in the, in the C-suite? Because the CFO, I mean, a lot of times when they're hitting the exit, sometimes it's not always for the best reason. No, absolutely. It's, and it's also you have to look at the, the team. So always look at the skill set that is in your C-suite. So if you have a marketing CEO that's never been involved with a company with a lot of leverage and they join and there's no firepower underneath them on the CFO level, that could be a real issue. What is the kind of comprehensive suite of skills that people have based on their prior experience? And this doesn't take all that much research. And especially when there's a change, you putting in an hour or two of research puts you far ahead of what most people do and definitely ahead of the, the quants. And so I think it's just, it's an interesting thing to look at it comprehensively don't trust the press release and just look at a very easy set of kind of past filings of what were the accomplishments of the company and who is responsible for what. You need to have that, that team to make sure the company works. Hey, Colby, I got a question here, Dennis Dickman. Yeah. I just wanted to ask, are you doing any homework on SPACs? Because, I mean, when I'm looking at these SPACs, I'm looking at the management teams um, because, you know, really that's what you're buying before they even have, a, you know, a, a target of, an, you know, to acquire a company. It's really, you just have that team. So like what I've been saying is like, I like to buy Starboard. I like to buy Bill Ackman. I like to buy the teams that I know. Um, are you doing some homework there? Because I'd love to read your research on which teams you like. Cause there's like, a, <laughs> there's like a million of these facts to buy here. And a lot of them don't have any targets even yet. So it's the team. So I just wonder if you're doing any homework there. Yeah, it's, I think you're going to face the even more pronounced, the, these people that have built these companies, a lot of them are facing this type of scrutiny for the first time. And so I think the toughest part about these SPACs is you don't have much to go off of. You're analyzing people who have really only been at one company, um, and usually they're the founders and their success has been in a very specific type of company. Now they're being asked to scale. Now they're being faced with the harsh light of public scrutiny. I think you're going to see incredible dispersion. Um, people who hit will hit. Great. And this is, and especially in a bull market, they're going to continue to rip. But I think you're going to see some pretty spectacular failures, and people are going to start talking about kind of the diligence people do around SPACs. Um, is it enough? Does the book building process of an IPO actually put them under the right scrutiny as we saw with WeWork? Um, I think the dispersion on those is going to start scaring people given management teams are not put 
under nearly enough scrutiny during that process of going public. One quick one before we let you go. Uh, you know, we're all about price and price action here. Do you do, you do any kind of overlays with, like, your, your findings, like on something like Valiant or something, just to track, to see the news and the price? I know you guys don't want to get too technical on anything, but uh, do you have any empirical data to support your findings? Yeah, I would say focusing on CEO change, external CEO change. When someone goes to hire and they don't have anyone on their bench internally, and they have to go outside the company, that is usually someone who's going to be incentivized to take a big swing. And we've seen a dispersion. We've seen on the top quartile, and there's 30 or so of those a year in the Russell 1000, so it's not actually a huge pond to analyze. Um, they outperform by 75 percentage points on the top quartile, and they underperform by 50 percentage points on the bottom quartile. So you have these massive swings and only 30 stocks that these happen to a year that over the next two years are fantastic trading opportunities and investing opportunities, depending on how long or short term you are. That's a really interesting observation. So I guess they outperform dr dramatically or they underperform dramatically. Yeah. You're going to one of, you're gonna get one or the other, I guess. Exactly. And if you were to invest in a whole bucket of those, you'd outperform the market by 4 or 5% a year, historically. All right. Well, next time. Right before we let you go, one more. And <laughs> asking, I got to ask it to Trevor Milton Nicola. Did you have any <laughs> look at this one? Because you think about CEOs that took, you know, uh, the, maybe the wrong road in the way that they went about running their company. Um, what What are your thoughts here? And Nicola's obviously changed now management here. What are your, do you have any thoughts here, Nicola? And, and yeah. Trevor the I would say this. It's very easy to see. A, a CEO's focus. So Instagram, social media presence. Sure. If someone, so John McGuire at T-Mobile was obviously someone who was a promoter, but it was a promoter for the company. Are you seeing someone fly on various vacations? Are you seeing the CEO of Vice buy a whole bunch of homes, even though, like, even though they haven't actually done anything yet? What is the CEO showing the public that they care about? Wow. And if it's not the company, if it's their private jet that they got to buy because all of a sudden someone gave them a whole lot of money in the EV space, like probably not someone you want to be investing your money behind. So that's what we saw with things like that. Makes sense. Even when they tweet about <laughs> the company, it's like one out of every four or five tweets. So yeah. uh, maybe the lesson here is don't use Twitter if you're a public CEO. <laughs> uh, Kobe Howard is the president of Paragon Intel. There is the link up on the site, Paragon in, on the screen, paragonintel.com. Kobe, uh, research is definitely interesting. Would love to, uh, to keep tabs and, and check in uh, on, it, on any new uh, changes throughout the year. Absolutely. Great talking to all you guys. All right. Thanks a lot, Kobe. 8.54, let's, um, let's do some tickers from the chat unless anyone had anything else they wanted to get to on our list. I think we had covered most of it. So Ticker time. Uh, I, well, I'll try to scream into the mic. Look, I'm trying, I'm trying oh to get no. this mic as close to my mouth as possible. I'm almost talking into that mic right there. <laughs> How about someone asked, and I, and I did a little technical. He didn't ask Mark about this, but his his big like he was like follow FDX, file Federal Express, right? Yep. And that's going to be the turn. That's the market. Well, man, this, this thing is turned south. I mean, maybe you have a you know three lows in here to lean on, but I wish he's not on this week, is he? He's on next week. I would like to ask him about that because that was his that was his bellwether for the market and. The market's kept on going. What do you think about this FedEx here, Dennis? Three lows. What do you think about the triple bottom from the last three days? I'm yeah, that's FedEx, that's full it. Disclosure. Yeah. You got another line in the sand here. If you want to take a shot, yep. just like we know we were talking XPEV when we said, you know, you want to take a shot. You got a line in the sand now. So you can take a shot here on FedEx. I am long it. Long-term account, not selling it. But as a trade, I kind of like it. So do I add and look for this from a trading perspective leaning on that 243 what we're looking at when we say triple yeah. bottom is the three lows from the last three days 242 42 242 72 243 in this you know volatile market those three lows are real close to each other so line in the sand so i like the candle yesterday getting out of there i think it pulls back a little bit today maybe you try some stopping yourself up below that 243 a question from the chat if 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 we're looking at the affirm ipo today Dennis, do you trade IPOs on their first day, or do you wait for them to no, shake out? No, never. Never? 
No, don't even care. I usually don't even start looking at them until I got at least a few days of data. Too, too volatile, too unpredictable. Like, again, my trading is relationship-based. When you have a new IPO, I can't base, you know, relationships. You know, it's just trading all on, you know, FOMO. It's trading on hype. It's trading on, you know, not none of it's trading on valuation. I mean, so it's tough. So, like, I want to be able to trade something by looking at something else. I want to say, okay, the S&Ps are selling off, so it's going to hit these stocks. I want to see, oh, TLT is trading down, so the banks are going to be higher. I mean, I'm looking always at relationships. That is, if you looked at yeah. me and say, what kind of trader am, am I? I will answer that question every single time. I am a relationship trader. There's no relationships in a new IPO in the first day. There's nothing you can even look at. You know, you can say, oh, well, the company's in this industry. But it's saw so much other stuff going on in there that it's not even looking at its relationship yet. It's all looking at, you know, so I want to wait till it calms down. You know, now you can take like a snowflake and you can say, okay, well, this is, you know, obviously, you know, technology company play, valuation's nuts. But, you know, what are the other, you know, newer IPOs doing? You know, you've, but on the first day, really hard to find an edge. And, you know, I want to trade where I'm looking at something else to give me some insight into where I think the stock might be going. You know why also you're a relationship trader? Why? You never get married to a losing position. Mm. What do you mean by that? Was, was that a joke? I, I don't even uh, know. That was I, a I'm joke. Trying to, I mean, it's a bad one. one. You're I'm supposed like, to I laugh right that's... away. God <laughs> darn it. <laughs> okay. Uh, All right. So I'm, gonna... I'm allowed to have one bad joke no, every I, quarter. We, so we're both like. <laughs> and other people got it. That we were all scared. Than that. Oh, okay, I, I don't know what to Chairman say. Kim I don't know if I should it. be there offended. We go. <laughs> uh, support. Look at the look at the chat getting me back after I say all the mean things to him. Thank you, chat. <laughs> <laughs> all right. I say mean uh, stuff to you all the time, so you can say it to me too. It's okay. Yeah, that would have that sound effect would have been wah wah wah, <laughs> right? Spencer, you're gonna be quicker on that. I didn't realize. Yeah. I, I didn't even know if that was okay. Moving on. Uh, what about Las Vegas Sands? We discussed this yesterday. Um, let's pull up a chart and maybe look at it a little bit longer term. Uh, for LVS, it, it's hard to trade. I, Fifty-five bucks. I'm gonna say the level it just again move. is fifty-five. It moves and then it doesn't. Fifty-five. Move. And it doesn't move right now. All of these stocks, the pure reopening plays, are waiting to see, okay, does the vaccine work on the mutated version? We want confirmation of that before we start buying these stocks again. So if you look, Las Vegas Sands, Wynn Resorts, all your airlines, they're starting to show a little light. But they're range-bound right now, and they want the answer to that question. They don't want to hear, oh, we think. Moderna says, we think it works on the mutated vi uh, virus. No. We, yeah. the Pfizer says, we think <laughs> they want confirmation that the vaccine works on the mutated version, because if it does, we're off to the races. If it doesn't, we're in the gutter on all those stocks. It is a huge event for everything that is peer reopening. So think casinos, think your airlines, um, you know, obviously your restaurants, your sit down restaurants. And, and obviously, you know, all the reopening stocks, we talk about them all the time. So reopening stocks want confirmation that this does indeed work on the mutated strain. 55 to 60. I mean, you know, pick your dart and throw it in there. And you're currently at 56 and a quarter. It's right there. It had the gap up on uh, vaccine Monday. Never got back above 60. Can't take out, you know, 55. You know, I know Sheldon Adelson died. Oh, how active he was in the company but there you go i mean for two months you've been in this range so be patient on this one and speaking of vaccine uh lisa did get her second dose and some people got really sick but she did she just felt a little bit queasy though so how long the, for a day or something um, she got it two days ago and and she last okay night now? she was like uh you know not real sick i know some but some people that got real sick from it. But so far, she's uh Does this feeling... spook people? I mean, this is going to be a tough thing because half the, it seems like half the population doesn't even want to get the vaccine at all. And now you're saying, oh, wait, I wait, might get wait, sick Joel, from the second wait, hold shot. On. When you say sick, do you mean like nausea? Yeah. yeah. All right. That's not like sick, sick. That's just like nausea. No, well, my uh, my oldest niece's fiance, he got he had to call in sick. I mean, he got really sick. Huh. So it, 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 it varies. She's pretty tough cookie. But anyways, um. All right. I'm in a queue. I called Myers. You know, you can call Myers and get in the queue to see when you can get yours if you're interested. Didn't know that. Okay, let's do one more. Paul Matthew Hill asked if we could talk about Netflix stock, please. 
And Boy, we haven't he, talked about Netflix. He asked nicely, so let's look at Netflix. It, it doesn't look healthy. One thing I will say is as long as it's above this whole 465, 480 yeah. area, it's look still – bulls are still in charge, but, man, it doesn't look healthy. It hasn't been able to make new highs multiple times at 550. keeps trying up. It eventually looks like – and then obviously competition is coming for them too, and they know it. That's why they're coming out with content hard because they know competition is coming. We know Disney is going – focusing now on Disney+. Plus. This is not good news for Netflix because if Disney starts coming out with a lot more content too, it's compa- – and everybody else is going streaming. You know, there's, there's so, much, so much competition coming, and you're starting to see that in the stock price, which is why it just can't seem to catch a bit. Is it fully valued at these prices? Uh, it's been fully valued for a long time, but the story has been carrying it. But now the story is, oh, competition. So it, it's it's tough. It's a tough chart. It doesn't look healthy. Dennis, did you hear what Netflix said yesterday? Or No. Yeah, I think it was yesterday. They said they're going to release a new movie every single week this year. I love that. I love Netflix content. I'm a big fan of it, Netflix. It, I, I'm going to hop on with, you, with this one. I I agree. I agree. They've been um, – uh, did you watch um, The Queen's Gambit? No, it's on, it's on the list. Not yet. That's good. It's good, especially if you like chess. I don't know if you have enough patience for chess, but um, I used to play chess. Very good. I had the four move, the four move checkmate. You know the four really? move checkmate. Yeah. This is wait, wait, hold on. This is the part where I say, if anyone wants to add me on chess.com, I'm at sj israel. Oh, Spencer's a huge player. Chess.com. Oh, friend, really? Holy. I'm dead serious. Okay, no, I'm not going to play Spencer. Ever. I haven't played chess in years. <laughs> I am dead serious. And I then what's chess. that other uh, show chess, Lisa like, four is days a watching week. that is pretty popular? I I, I think it's okay. Um, it has a lake in it, something, Virgin Lake or something like that. <laughs> specific. Which one is that? <laughs> Terrible. Dan. I don't know. No, don't no. Know. What's the name of that one, Spencer? No, what's the name of it? Um, Sorry. Virgin it River. A la- it has a lake in the title or like a lake in the No, it's called show. Virgin River. Okay. It's kind of scary. Yeah. A lot of people are going to get killed thing. in it, but I don't want to give anything away. Okay, nine oh three. Let's wrap it up for the day. Someone in the chat is just chiming in that uh, the Intel CEO is stepping down. Bob Swan, you were wondering it's, when this was going to happen. C- Holy C- CNBC mackerel. just reported. This is great. We just had this conversation. Get Colby on the line. Oh, get wow. Colby. Someone get Colby I back. I put my selling shoes on here. Me. Where did this get to, Joel? Give me. I'm. I'm gonna sell 57, this thing. Today. This 57, gets, 57, 57 bid overdone. for size. 57 bid for size. Let's see if they anybody. They hated this stock two weeks ago. Now they love it. I mean, this market is so finicky. Clearing 56.23. Oh man, let's see if we can drill down on the dailies. Do you got an iceberg there at 57, Dennis? Is that you? I thought about selling at 52 the other day. I'm sure glad I didn't do that. It's 57. This thing gets to 60. I'm getting the hell out. So how do you think it feels? Going 59.85. If it gets there, I'm selling it today. I, we know what we ran out of time, but I almost asked Colby about Intel because he got a lot of uh, the CEO oh, got a lot look of at heat that gap at 60 on that last conference call. Yeah. If they hire is. Lisa Sue, though, <laughs> I'm just oh. about, we're we gonna get her on rumors the on this show. Wow. <laughs> That's what turned AMD around, though. I mean, Intel's lost. Think about how much, how long has Swan been in there? On, uh, on not long. long, not, not long. that long, eh? No, a couple years. Either ago? way, either way, you've got you know, a, a, twenty years ago it was Intel inside. If you didn't have Intel, your processor was crap. Now it's all about AMD and Nvidia. So obviously, over the last twenty years, has ever been running this company for the last twenty years, run it into the ground to a certain extent because it has not performed. This was your leader, and now it's your laggard. So they love the idea of trying to get somebody else in there. So I agree that the stock should be up. Should it be up 10% on this? That seems overdone to me. How, how do you think, it, Bob? How do you think Bob feels right now? <laughs> AMD. Look at the relationships here, too. AMD uh, chats all over it, getting smacked, too. So you got AMD and NVIDIA both going down on this because, whoa, Intel, we got new leadership. Maybe they're going to come. Competition coming. You know what? And, that, and Intel, or, well, AMD, well, it hit its all-time high. It was a little weak yesterday in a, in a strong market. And NVIDIA has just had this crazy trading range. All right, C- CNBC, is reporting, CNBC is reporting that uh, the VMware uh, CEO is replacing Bob Swan at Intel. 
So what's VMware doing? Is, is he? Oh yeah, VMware is down. This is a lot. Oh, look at all the relationships here. There's all kinds of stuff see, going on. Yeah. <laughs> VMware is down five bucks on this. Remember Dell, if you want to go even further. Dell owns a piece of VMware, a huge chunk of it. So Dell is trading down a dollar on this as well. So one move impacts five companies here. That's relationship trading at its best. So knowing how those work. Intel up, AMD down, NVIDIA down, VMware down, Dell down. All because of Swan being out and obviously... How do you say his name? Gelsinger? Pat Gelsinger going from VMware. 59, man. That oh, There's just no – this is a one minute here. There's no – that right, is if you want to sell that there. at 59.95, <laughs> you better get your order out there. Oh, it keeps going up. Maybe I got to raise her up here. Too much for uh, the Yeah, then it's going to go you to 60. You want to hear? Oh, no, I'm here. <laughs> it's going to go to 62. And I have no order out there yet. You're not going to sell it. <laughs> and it's going to go to 54. And then you're going you're gonna to cry it's going about to, it. It might go to 60 right now. 58, holy cow. Now Robinhood's got a hold of it now. When Robinhood gets a hold of it, whoa. <laughs> right. I don't know hey, where it's going. Right. I, I probably will sell into this No, realm. not it me. Not me. Good cash to someone in the chat. I only have two someone... screens up because I work at home. I only have two screens, out of, and so that was – I didn't have my news feed open, so good cash to, uh, on the chat on that. Fireworks at the end of our show today. Today's show is sponsored by Paragon Intel. Investors miss opportunities uh, and hidden risks because of incomplete, inaccurate, and inaccessible data on corporate executives. Paragon Intel provides research and data tools giving investors holistic analysis around corporate management. To learn more, go to ParagonIntel.com. Thanks to our guest today who is the president of Paragon Intel. Really good timing on that, actually. Wow. Colby Howard. I know. Thanks, Man, thanks to him. Good. Uh, we appreciate uh, him, everyone in our chat. Smash that like button as well on YouTube. It takes a whole three seconds. Hit that like button. We appreciate that. We'll cover Dennis's face with with the like button there. But smash that. Thanks like button. to Andrew Lobos too for uh, for uh, for bringing us Colby. I don't know if yeah. he's still listening, but thank you, Andrew. Great. For all of our podcast listeners, please remember all the information from our show is meant to be used as informational purposes, not for investing or trading advice. Dennis is gone. That means Joel and I are heading out as well. We'll be back at 3.40 p.m. Eastern time. Everyone have a good rest of your day. And